and welcome back to Open Your Eyes. If you're joining us now, we are joined by um, Sir Tirso Galvez, who is the Chief Transport Officer. Good morning. Good morning. And um, we are here to discuss, um, or get an update at least, on the Belize Road Safety Initiative. So, um, obviously, uh, the recent um, tragedies on um, our roads have been in everybody's mind over the past few days. And I think a question that's probably brewing in everybody's mind is, you know, in when we have so much situation, when we have s several situations happening in a short space of time, are we doing enough to ensure that our roads are safe? Mm -hmm. Hi, good morning. Good morning, uh, good morning Belize. Um, thanks again for the invite. Um, um, speaking on behalf of the Department of Transport, um, yeah. right, and also of um, part of the whole road safety initiative, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, being a part of the road safety project, the first project that we had, which was on the corridor, and uh, we had been here before. Yeah. And now we have a second um, project coming on stream, which would be on the Philip Golson Highway. Mm -hmm. But in respect, uh, in regards to um, recent um, um, incidents, um, as I, I always mention, that I do not like to use the word accidents. Right. You know, these are crashes. These are uh, things that can be prevented. Mm -hmm. um, road traffic crashes are preventable. And one of the things that we must realize is that these incidents are being caused. And so uh, the, 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 the basic or the, the, the reason for some of these is um, people behavior, mm -hmm. right? And that is, the, that is what we need to do. And um, I, I want to emphasize uh, specifically to mention that road safety is everybody's business, mm -hmm. right? It is not only the agencies that are responsible for traffic enforcement as the Department of Transport or the police or the traffic um, officers from the municipalities. Yes, we have a, 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 a huge responsibility because we are the enforcers. And the thing is that uh, we need to enforce. The laws are there to be enforced. And so we must lead by example and enforce these laws. So if we are being allowed to do our jobs to enforce, to enforce, and sometimes, you know, sometimes we have issues mm -hmm. um, carrying out our duties. So the thing is that um, we must be allowed to do our job the proper way to enforce and not to have, um, you know, um, treat anybody different. Everybody must be treated the yeah. same regarding at, at which position you are. Yeah. Because not because I am Mr. So-and-so or Miss, um, I'm this daughter of this person, mm -hmm. you know, we, we just let it slide. Mm -hmm. So we need to do our share. So the, to me, it, the, the, the foundation is to change people behavior because yeah. people need to be educated. We cannot start, we cannot stop talking about road safety. This is something that we must continue yeah. every time, um, you know, to be on the air as, as much as possible. Police officers on the road need to be out there yeah. doing a lot of education also. So they also need to be informed about how to educate people and let people realize what is the result, what is the end result of not adhering to the rules of yeah. the road, not adhering to the traffic signs. Tirsa, I'm, it's interesting that, that you introduced uh, this issue so early on because um, about having equal distribution when it comes to uh, facing consequences for um, breaking the law on the road. And I'm reflecting on uh, the road safety initiative when it was first being rolled out in the Western Corridor. Yes. And they'd done an analysis to see uh, how people were using the roads. Right. And I remember very clearly uh, Mr. Jeffries mm -hmm. was here and he said the number one perpetrator on that corridor were cars that bared government plates. Those were the vehicles which we had identified were the were the most vehicles that were speeding yes. in excess yes. on the highways and Going recklessly and, and, overtaking and exactly and so having no regards to to yeah. the authorities no and so my question is that while everyone has this responsibility and there really is no blame that, uh, that it has to be equally shared exactly oftentimes when we talk about getting people to want to change a behavior we have to believe the very same thing that you said which is you are held to the same standards that I am. Exactly. And if there's no internal 
within the government department, if there's no internal um, drive to set the example, and I see the government vehicle doing it, so I say, well, I'll mm -hmm. do it, mm -hmm. then it'll be very hard to get everyone to come on board right. with this kind of behavior change. And, uh, and I'm, very, I'm very happy because the thing is that we have a very, uh, I mean, someone who is very much into road safety at the, at the highest level, and I know that you, you are familiar with, yeah. with Ms. Hyde. Yes. And she is, at, you know, right there at the Ministry of um, Economic Development. Yes. And she has been, you know, hammering. And so uh, she is our voice at yeah. that level. Yeah. Uh, and to pass this information, you know, to um, to, to to her counterparts and, and to the you know to the to the, to the ministries, mm -hmm. and like I said, uh, you know, the we have the um, the, the uh, department that is responsible for government vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, assets and management, utilities, also, and they have been s uh, sending circulars to the different ministries to tell drivers that if you know they are responsible for yeah. the vehicles and uh, they they should not tint their vehicles and, and then we see th these things still happening and that's yeah. the thing because I, I always say that we cannot do our a job sometime because you know we are not leading by example yeah. and, and so it's difficult for me or for officers to be out there doing our enforcement telling people that they are not supposed to put on tint on their vehicles. The law is not saying that you're not supposed to put on tint but the tint, there is a regulation yes. for the percentage. It can be too tint, dark. Right? It can be too dark. So, you know, it's 50% to the front and 20% to the back. And so, again, we, we need, to, we need to, to streamline and ensure that everybody is following. If they want to change the laws, then they need to change the laws to say that government vehicles are exempted or something like that. But yeah. presently, the law does not exempt anyone except with uh, the written permission from the minister, which has to be gazetted, for example, in extreme cases where people, for example, are suffering from skin infection wow. with, or, or because of the sun rays, they can apply for a special permit. Uh, of course, they have to produce evidence yeah. that they have, you know, this, this uh, condition, yeah. you know, so. So what uh, you're saying is that a part of uh, what I hear from you is a frustration that you're not able to get everyone on board and setting the example. Right, and, yeah. and that's, that's difficult for all. I believe that's difficult for all enforcement people who, yeah. who are on the ground. Um, you know, because uh, it, it, it is frustrating uh, at times to, to be out there because the thing is that we, you, we are trying to do what we need to do mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's yeah. like I said, uh, leading by example is, is the main thing. We can't, we can't be saying one thing and then yeah. something is happening out, you know, different. Mm -hmm. so, so do you think then, um, you know, based on what you said er earlier, do you think prob it's uh, it's a bigger problem, or which is a bigger problem? Then would it be the um, difficulty with enforcing, or is it really the um, lack of, let's say, education in the first mm. place, so that people may not be, you know, f fully educated before they get on the road and then they go out that and cause key. problems? So, which do you think? Um, I, I think I think I think like 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 I said that in ed education is key. Uh, we need to do a lot more education. Yes. Mm -hmm for people to realize, like I said, that they need to realize what, what will be the end result. Because uh, we all know we, have, we, we, we go through this process, especially what the statistics, uh, we need to, to, to look at, at what the data uh, is saying, what the, um, the, the World Global Report Status Report yes. on Road Safety mm -hmm. is saying. You know, we have people dying on the road. Actually, road traffic crashes are, is the number one uh, cause, cause of, of, death. Mm -hmm. of, of death from um, age. Uh, five to each 29, 29. Mm -hmm. and it's it's much alarming than that because the thing is that these are young people, but it's mostly males also, mm -hmm. you know. So so that is telling us something, and so that means that we have to focus on these young people, yeah. on male drivers especially, and especially now that and 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 and, and buying a lot of motorcycles because a lot of young young guys are are, are riding motorcycle right now. The statistic is showing that for this year, we have 66 deaths already for this year. Last year, 2018, it was 79. And uh, we are in November right now. And uh, also- Starting December, yeah. yeah but this yes, is the sorry, peak season. In, in this, uh, yes, and, and, and also that um, for this year, 20 deaths are related to motorcycles de uh, for this wow. year. 20 out of the 66, 
right? Now this information uh, has been uh, provided by JIC, which is the uh, police uh, branch that is responsible yeah. for gathering this information. And yeah. so, you know, they are the one that call it this information. I'm so glad you, you, you brought up numbers because that's always been my question. There are two things that we don't get to hear very often in terms of what causes the crashes. And I acknowledge what you're saying. An accident means you didn't mean for it to happen. Right. Crash means right. you had a part to play because of your behavior. Mm -hmm. um, but in these crashes, there are two things that I know are a part of the law but we don't really report on the police really never say one whether they were wearing helmets yes. on the motorcycles mm -hmm. uh two whether the people or the driver in the car had on their seat belts because we are required yes. to wear seat belts yes and then the third thing is that we don't always hear about the uh drug testing that is done no. and what results yes. how much alcohol or drugs had a factor in the crash itself what do we know that's, from the statistics? That's, that's very true. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if whenever the, because the thing is, the police are the one that does the investigation yes. when it comes to the traffic crashes when they visit the scene. And, 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 and you are right, because I have never heard uh, any, any uh, report saying that this uh, incident occurred because the person was on his cell phone. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, maybe the thing is sometimes they are not the first respond uh, to, yeah. to be at the scene yeah. and people you know heartless people also i must say because they see these incidents that occur on the road people are are, are, are actually dying in the vehicle or you have people are already um, dead in the vehicle and they go there to the accident scene and and and, and, and steal yeah. the, the the cell phone which could be used as evidence as to say well let me check the cell phone where this person was texting mm -hmm. you know yes um, there's no report in respect to like so whether or not the person was wearing the seat belt yeah. because like I said the incidents many incidents that occur people are being flown out of the out of the vehicle mm -hmm. and, and that's that's a telling clear you that in the clear indicator that they were not using the seat belt and this is something that we like I always say we don't need to we don't need to implement laws uh, vehicles are designed now to protect uh, you know we talk about safer vehicles yeah. to protect people uh, from these incidents uh, to, to assist them with the seat belt, with the airbags yeah. and stuff like that, you know. And um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't know if the when so the police... So we don't collect that data? We don't look we at... Don't, I, don't, I, don't, uh, we, no, I don't think that the police uh, actually um, take it down yeah. as, uh, to say, well, this is a possible cause. Because yeah. normally you see driving without you can attention yeah, mm -hmm. or, or not uh, improper overtaking. But you know these are some of the the, the the things that i think that also need to be collected i mean you know that, like you said uh, whether or not um at every incident that occur is it just whether they believe that if it if it is believed that the incident would have been caused by drink driving that is when uh, test is being yeah. performed. Like if they know uh, they uh, left a bar or a party right. then it's a part of the I report. I believe that it should not. be something which which is being done, which should be done at all incidents, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, yeah. But, but the fundament, I mean, th there's so many questions I have for I you. <laughs> I apologize I if I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. But because it, it is such a critical issue, and you mentioned, I think, one of the most important facts that we have to be honest about. It's usually the younger people who lose their lives mm -hmm. in uh, crashes. Right. Um, and, and anything we can do to prevent a loss of life and, and the, the heart, heart the hurt to the family um, will be helpful. Mm -hmm. But w we have to go back to some of the fundamentals in the country. And, and I want to ask, what are we doing to better prepare new drivers who are going on the road? What laws have been changed? What processes have changed in terms of how people get their license? Because I still see young drivers who could care less about using a seatbelt. And it's always been in the regulation. It boils down, like, like I said, it boils down to the enforcement uh, and to ensure that we are all doing what we need to do and that um, these standards are being maintained in respect to how you go about, as you said, yeah. how you go about getting your driver's license. The thing is that, the, as you all know, the Department of Transport is responsible for yeah. uh, enforcement and for traffic uh, registration and licensing outside of the municipalities, yeah. right? That has been taken away from us 
by so virtue your of city council and uh, your yeah, town by, council by virtue that do of, it. of of uh, SI, uh, a, which was done in in 2008 so now we have nine municipalities mm -hmm. that are also responsible for traffic control and the issuing and registration of vehicles and the issuing of driver's license yeah right when they when we hand over this this responsibility to them of course we had to do some in-house training mm -hmm. but w as time went on yeah. we had new pers new people i mean town council changed yeah. and and the things just Staff. Start, so now you, you know? have untrained persons who administer this thing. right and then they don't even, I, i'm telling you that, uh, that i have visited some town councils and i have asked them what is their mandate mm -hmm. in respect to road traffic and they don't even have this set of law books mm -hmm. which they should be guided by which yeah. is the motor vehicle and road traffic act for them to, to know what is their mandate and they are just basically doing it's just repetition just mm -hmm. collecting the revenue from the person license the vehicle there is you know i'm not just bashing the the the, the, the municipalities but the thing is that uh, even our department have have um, faults also in respect to proper inspection of vehicles mm -hmm. right we do basic inspection but at least if the vehicles are being inspected to ensure that the lights are working that the, that the brakes are working you know and that you know the basic basic thing that 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 creates problem outside yeah you mm -hmm. know vehicle right uh, the operating outside on the highways with no lights no headlights yeah. no re no rear lights and these things contribute to mm -hmm. crashes yeah. but let me go back to the question about training because at one point there was a conversation about potentially looking at a driving school i believe when you had some consultants in because let's let's imagine yes. the scenario that takes place in this country mm -hmm. i learned to drive along with another driver mm -hmm. that driver learned to drive from another driver. driver and there was no formal education no mm -hmm. uh information on legislations proper behavior safe behavior so however they taught me how to overtake that's how i overtake whether it's the right way or wrong way whether mm -hmm. it puts people in danger or not mm -hmm. how to use the roundabout right. how to maneuver yourself on the road when to put on your lights all these things there's no foundation for this so everybody's out here yeah. carrying on the bad habits of the person who passed theirs on to them we as part of the belize motor vehicle registration and licensing system that is also part of the whole project in respect to as a matter of fact we have a safe driver's manual mm -hmm. that all that is left right now is for the minister to sign um the forward mm -hmm. on the on which is a uh, 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 a book like this um with uh, information on driving mm -hmm. which will be the new information that will be given out to drivers which includes all that information that you mentioned as to how you drive around i mean around the boats um what the the the, the lines the road markings indicate mm -hmm. you know and, and and all this information will be there and we also as part of the project and i had said this before is that we are still um this project is still ongoing and yeah. we are we we have accomplished now that we have all our district offices issuing the the new laminated driver's license now i mean not laminated the barcoded driver's license we have moved away from the laminated one now we are working on the in, in information new information for the written test information which should be a data bank of questions that we will have so it will not be the same questions that people would be coming and say well i, I already know the answer to these the, the information the questions will be from the safe driver manual yeah. and it will be done electronic where you will be sitting behind a computer and you would have multiple choice questions but the questions will not be the same and so that is something that we are also working yeah, on because right now the, right? the written test is it's extremely outdated ex exactly exactly it's uh, it's outdated and and uh but again there is there are basic rules of the yeah. road mm -hmm. that people should abide by and i believe i believe that if you follow these rules of the road whether or not yeah. some might be outdated the thing is that uh, maybe they need a little bit um, a tweaking mm -hmm. amendment but in respect to how you overtake and, and this 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 is to me is one of the major also one of the major cause of traffic crashes out there because people are overtaking and they are reckless in overtaking not ensuring yeah. that the road ahead is clear and the thing is that we 
people, you will always tell people that you should ensure that the road ahead is clear before you overtake. But we should also remember that we also need to look in our rear view mirror before yeah. we overtake. Because you might you might see the road is clear ahead, and you don't know that there is somebody who wants to overtake you from behind, yeah. and so you overtake not knowing, and then you, you have an incident there. Another problem that we have that I have seen is people tailgating behind, traveling too close behind vehicles mm -hmm. on the road, and so pulling off into traffic, especially when you are behind these large vehicles, and and the vehicle coming in the opposite direction can't see they only see the truck, and you pull out right behind these large vehicles and then you end up on either with another oncoming vehicle motorcycle for example yeah. and the motorcycles riders always do this yeah you are on the road and they are right behind your tail oh, just yes. because they can run you or they swerve right or left you never exactly. know which side they'll you be know? on and and so the thing is that people the incident which occurred uh in ladyville when you see that video the thing is that that is a clear indication where you miscalculate the speed of a motorcycle mm -hmm. you see the motorcycle from a far distance but by the time you make that turn that cycle is already there so you the, the law is telling you you should ensure that the road is clear so you do not attempt to until that motorcycle but isn't, it is even in, isn't it against the law and i might be wrong mm -hmm. this is to show you how little <laughs> educated but aren't you supposed to pull off the road before you make a left turn no and that's and, and i'm glad that you brought this up because there is nothing in the law that tells you that you must pull over to the right oh, really? before you make a left turn and that is something that has been and, and i have heard many people coming on the talk show people who would say that they are um, I don't want to mention who, but um, the thing is that they are telling people that you have to pull off on the right-hand side of the road. No, the isn't thing that is a that safer practice, though. It, it might be, but you will not always have the option to pull off the side of the road. Okay. The thing is, you don't do that when you are in town. Why should it be different when you drive on the highway? Mm -hmm. If you are driving on the highway and you want to pull off to the left, you already know where you're going to pull off. You, you 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 slow down you put on your indicator so that people behind know that you 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 make, uh, make a left yeah. turn and that's that's another thing because the thing is that people who are behind should also be aware that you that that vehicle in front might you see that's driving that's yeah. defensive driving mm -hmm. you have to be you have to yeah. always be looking out for people errors or mistake yeah. and that is not a, a, a I mean people putting on their indicator that they are going to make a left turn you should respect and see the brake light. That's why it, you should be focused on mm -hmm. what you are doing to see from uh, from afar that this vehicle has, uh, the brakes are coming on, that vehicle yeah. is slowing down, and it's going to make a left turn. Now, the thing is, you might say, what if the vehicles them that is coming in the opposite direction do not want to give you pass? Now, again, we have to be, we have to exercise some courtesy. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of drivers don't have. They don't, they don't uh, respect other yeah. drivers. You have to show some courtesy. If I am coming on the road and I see a line, long line of traffic ahead of, of me, and there's a vehicle, one vehicle, one vehicle that wants to make a left turn, why can't I just stop and ease and allow this vehicle to pass through? Mm -hmm. You know, we need to exercise some patience, and that's what I think a lot of people don't have. Uh, they don't have the, the, the patience to, the, 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 you know, road yeah. rage, as you mentioned. So we need to exercise and we need to show some love and, and, and yeah. respect for, for other road users. Yeah, yeah sure. I want to um, just go back a little bit to, to, I guess, some of the issues that you were speaking about in terms of enforcement. Because I think maybe um, people might be, um, you know, a bit alarmed to know that, you know, one thing is that, uh, you know, the st in terms of gathering, you know, statistics in, at these crashes, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the information is not there. It's not stored, let's say, so that um, the data can be monitored. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned um, the issues that um, may occur because, you know, we have the different agencies, whether you have the police department on one hand, then you have the municipalities, and then, of course, you know, the um, yeah, the, the, the Department of Transport mm -hmm. sort of having maybe logistical um, issues. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess my question is, is there any effort or initiative to, you know, moving forward so that we can ensure, so that we can, you know, start to create policies or, you know, make enforcement more effective? Um, is there anything that perhaps the ministry is doing that will, um, you know, allow for greater um, 
let's say coordination so that yeah. we can enforce yes. yeah. Yeah. collaboration between yeah. all the agencies and, and that's that's very important because the thing is that we like you like you mentioned we need to we need to pull our resources together because we if we don't have the resource uh, we don't have the human resource we don't have the the um, financial resource the equipment then this is where the collaboration but we need to speak to each other we need to we need to come together because we are basically responsible for the same um, responsibilities. No, we are responsible for enforcement. Yeah. So we need to, to do that. Um, I know that the police, uh, like I said, the police is the one that deals with the accidents. Yeah. Now we have, we, have a, we have a situation also as it relates to data collection in respect to uh, fatalities and injuries because yeah. we also know that the health department also so there is always the issue with stat statistics yeah. and things, you know. And sometimes so, it's private ambulances versus the Ministry right. of Health ambulances. You know, and so um, that 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 all the, the 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 agencies, as you mentioned, have to come together to to look at these at these issues. Um, there is a national road safety committee also, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. which was um, which was approved uh, by cabinet as a matter of fact, and Prime Minister. Uh, sanction and, and that was launched. I believe it was in 2017 or 2018. Uh, a national road safety committee that involves multiple agents, social security, the police, health, yeah. you know, um, churches, uh, you know, and, and different people who are responsible to sit at the table and to make recommendations for changes yeah. as it relates to to the laws. Uh, you know, as, as you mentioned, maybe. Maybe, maybe the la the laws are there. Maybe we need stiffer penalties, you well, know, for people. You know, will will the stiffer penalties, you know, uh, will it change people's behavior? If, but if in anything? order to get to penalties, though, you need enforcement, and yes. that's my question. Because, you know, I, I was on the road this weekend. I didn't pass other than the the, the regular checkpoint, uh, mm -hmm. which is by the Coast Guard. I didn't pass any other, and. We all know when we leave this country and we drive in another country, mm -hmm. we follow all the laws. All the laws. But there's a reason why. The minute I don't have on my seatbelt in Mexico, I get pulled over. Mm -hmm. And I have to plea or take my ticket right. or whatever it is. It's the same thing in the States. You won't even try it in yeah. the States because you are so fearful of being pulled over. Mm -hmm. So the enforcement keeps people accountable. And while we have regulations for seatbelt and mm -hmm. speed limits, we don't have enforcement. So people know that it doesn't matter if they're driving 80 miles an hour on the highway, nobody's gonna stop them. Um, Arlen, that's, why, that's why I said that how the whole issue of enforcement has to be, has to be something that, that we all do and we ensure that we have the standards of doing the enforcement. And because the thing is that, like, like I said, um, you come on the road, you meet the police officer under um, having a police checkpoint, right? Yeah. They ask you, let me, can I see your driver's license? Driver's license, your children's Oh, no, wait, license. let me give you the real scenario. You pull up to the, the point, you pull on your seatbelt. Mm -hmm. You may tell your passenger, put on your seatbelt. Mm -hmm. You may hide your beer in the back, mm -hmm. and then I go to the police mm -hmm. officer. And then the minute I drive away, I take off the seatbelt, I retrieve my beer. I'm not saying everybody Every, drinks, does that. but some people yeah. do. Yeah. Well, th that's, that's true. Well, what I was going to base, base myself was that whatever we do, mm -hmm. we must do it across the board, yeah. right? You cannot just, uh, and, and, and the thing is that what I have learned is that not all the police officers are trained in traffic, uh. right? And, 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 I, and uh, even with the issuing of the traffic violation tickets, for example, the proper yeah. writing out of the traffic violation, tickets and the offenses on the ticket. Many times people um, arrive at our office, for example, to pay a traffic violation ticket almost at the end of the 30 days because the police tell them you have 30 days to pay this traffic violation ticket. Mm -hmm. And it's not so. Mm -mm. If 15 days, the, yeah, the ticket okay. is for 15 days, the fine on the ticket is for 15 days, and after each day after that, it increased by $5 yeah. um, um, for not paying the ticket within the yeah. specific the penalty time. fee, yeah. Right? And so now when the person comes to my cashier at the office to pay their ticket, 
then they find out that they have an area of $75 because the other 15 days times five is $75. Now imagine you get a ticket for $50 and you have to pay $75 more and you reach the cashier and the cashier tell you, sir, I cannot accept your $50 or you need to pay 50 plus $75. And yeah. the first thing the person said, well, the police, police told me that me. I had 30 days to pay this. So ticket. you're saying that the the, it, the police officers who work on the highway don't get any training from the transport department? To we have we have mentioned to them. Some of them have requested, mm -hmm. and we have mentioned to them that we are willing to do the training. Yeah. And like I said, some senior police officer that mentioned to me, Mr. Galvez, if the officers are not traffic officers who know what they are doing, then ticket book should not be issued to them. Mm. And so you understand. So and the thing is that they have to know. But what they are doing out there. Will we ever see, because we know resources will always be a challenge in our country, human resources and financial resources for this issue. Um, we've seen the highway patrol vehicles and every now and again you may pass them on the road, mm -hmm. but is it an issue where perhaps we need more enforcement for the currently existing laws? Yes, we do. Uh, we are getting six more highway patrol vehicles. Okay. That is something very good. Yes. Through the second road safety project. You know that they will be working on the um, coastal road. Mm -hmm. um, they will be working on the Belize uh, Corozal yeah. portion of the road. Corozal will be getting a highway patrol vehicle. Orange Rock will be getting a highway patrol vehicle. Belize City will be getting another one. San Ignacio, Belmopan. For to, to be responsible for enforcing and yeah. to be on the highway. Now, this is what I'm telling my officers. Presence is deterrence. So yes. your presence being out there is something that you need to be focused on. Many times, personally, I have told them I have been on the highway between Belmopan and Belize City, and I have not been seeing my patrol vehicle. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure I, someone and, is saying that right and, now. And, yeah. and, and, and this is something that, you know, the, I am the chief transport officer and I have mentioned this to my the people them who are responsible because ju just like the police department we have an officer who is responsible for each district as a senior transport officer who has traffic enforcement people under their belt yeah. and they have traffic wardens and the vehicles are there we have so what's we their have a answer quota. when you tell them you didn't see them the excuse they always find excuse we just went in to have lunch Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but so, don't they uh, have shifts? Uh, you know, yes, they have shifts, and that's the thing, you know. But Teresa, this sounds, you know what sound, it sounds like, or just from listening to you, mm -hmm. and I think Gavin mm -hmm. was getting at that, it seems that there's so many different functioning parts, so many different parts that may or may not be functioning, and, and worse yet, because if we have highway patrol vehicles, but not, they're not on the highway, mm -hmm. If we have a licensing process, but they're not checking lights or brakes. If we have laws that say use your seatbelt and maintain the speed limit, but nobody's checking on it. If we have police officers doing check stops, but they don't know the transport laws, then we have a lot of different elements, but nothing that actually works together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and this goes with, uh, and I, I need to say that yes, mm -hmm. our behavior is the first thing that right. allows these crashes to right. happen. Right. But you know, it, it it's it's like having a dog that is 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 not um, suitable around humans off a leash. You know, mm -hmm. you have to put in the protective measures. Yeah. So if we know that the human behavior, our driving culture, is already one that is dismissive of safety, and all these other parts are there but not working together, mm -hmm. how do we? I mean, what what is the the step forward in being able to get everyone to come to the table so that you can use the tools that you have to kind of get us in check as drivers mm -hmm. yeah um, again uh, the thing is that our people or we who are enforced or in, in responsible for enforcement also need to to put our our actions together we, yeah. we need to we need that, as you said, the, co the, the coordination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't just wait until these incidents occur to see that, because I've, uh, like I said, I, I've heard the, the commissioner of police mentioning that they will be putting out a lot more um, highway patrols on the road, that is good. But we should also be uh, uh, proactive 
right, rather than to be reactive, because many times that's the way we tend to do yeah. things, that we wait until things happen. And so, and I, like I said, the, poli the, the police, myself, right, we have a huge responsibility, but we cannot be on the ground at all the time, yeah. you know, and we have people who should be doing, uh, who, are, who have their responsibilities. And when we find these people being like negligent, then we'll have to deal with them, yeah. right? Um, our officers, like I said, the thing is that uh, resources is one of our, our, our problem also in respect to um, fuel, for example. <laughs> we all know that um, we have a quota, for example, um, oh, that wow. is being given f uh, out on a monthly basis for the use of the vehicles. Uh, <laughs> if, they, if they utilize, and this is what really gets to me, is the fact is that sometimes we even have to request for additional fuel for the vehicles before the month is up because mm -hmm. the fuel quota has, uh, is, has exhausted. Yet, like, like I mentioned earlier, I don't see the vehicles working. So where are the vehicles? Where are they operating? Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I am not out there all the time. Yeah. Uh, th yes, they can say that uh, they went in to do uh, certain things, but the vehicle belongs out on the highway. For us, we are responsible for highway. Yeah. Our vehicles should not be seen within Belize City, circulating in Belize City. Our vehicles, we have two vehicles for Belize. The Highway Patrol, which was, the one, which was one of the highway vehicles mm -hmm. to monitor from Belize City to Democracia. So on a daily basis, that vehicle should be out there patrolling from Belize to Democracia. And we have the other one from Belmopan, should be um, patrolling from Belmopan to Democracia. They also have a wingle, which is responsible for enforcement on the Philip Wilson Highway. Mm -hmm. So again, like I said, we have a huge responsibility. We have to carry out our responsibility. But again, road safety is everybody's business, yes. right? And and everybody have a role to play. People cannot be driving on the on, on, on with the cell, cell phone, That's right. texting, uh, you know, not focusing on the road. So you know, people must be focused on what they are doing, mm -hmm. you know, um, because these incidents happen at in split seconds. The minute you 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 slip and then you have uh, your vehicle with blind spots you you don't see that you don't see until it's too late yeah. you know and and again respecting the speed limit driving under certain conditions on the on the roads again you know people overtaking around curves you know okay. it's raining it's raining people still speeding on the road you can't see your vision is blurred uh, you you know the road is foggy yet you see yeah. vehicles speeding on the road one person I always remember, Ms. former uh, Minister of Transport, Melvin Holtz. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say they don't like to ride it, Mr. Hel Mr. Holtz because he drives fast. No, Mr. Holtz's principle was, or what he said was, how can I crash if I am on my lane and there's nothing in front of me? You know, there's no obstruction. So you could see uh, and you look at it, it, it makes sense yeah. because it has to be that you you move off your lane and to go and overtake where um, where another. Yeah, but then you also have other users you on have, the road. Yes, you have obstructions and you have things that could happen to your vehicle. Yeah. And and I want to say before also that now we are coming up to Christmas and a lot of people will be traveling. You know, people need to do pre-inspection of their vehicles before. They need to check their tires. They need to make sure that their tires you know don't have bulges don't have cuts wires are not coming out of their tires <coughs> you know it's not worn people don't realize also that that the, the not having equal pressure in your tires is also can contribute to road traffic crashes mm. because you it's just like if you are driving with one tire uh, with the with the correct pressure and the other mm -hmm. one with a lower pressure it tends to pull you yeah. on, on yeah. the side just you know so you look at your tires, you look at the wear of your tires. If your tires is, is eating inside, that means that you need alignment. Yeah. You know, so you need to do this inspection of your vehicle, check, make sh ensure that your gauges are working properly. Mm -hmm. Your brakes, you check your brakes, you, know, you, 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 you press your brake pedal. If your brake pedal goes down, if you, you put your foot on the brake pedal and the brake pedal goes all the way down, then it's possible that you have a, brake, uh, a fluid leak in the lines of your of the brake fluid mm -hmm. you need to check your check your brake fluid and ensure have the proper you know so you need to do, do this inspection even you need to your, use your seat belt yes you need to ensure that your seat belts are working 
even the wiper for your vehicles it's raining mm -hmm. i think you need to ensure that your wipers are, yeah. are working your light you know yeah. your lights uh, on respect to the to the to the wiper i just want to uh, bring this my dad taught me this when i was a kid he's uh, growing up uh, he said that whenever you if for some reason your wiper is not working you buy you buy a, a potato a simple potato Mm -hmm. an Irish potato and you cut the potato in half and you rub the potato all over your windshield mm -hmm. and when it rains the water just slides off oh wow so you know so things yeah. like that you know people you, you know you yeah. could try it one of these days yeah. just yeah. try it you cut the potato and you rub all over the windshield it was it won't mess your windshield the rain comes it just flow right after your windshield that's interesting you know so yeah. little things little tricks yeah. that you know you need to no, no. Yeah, you know, and, and this conversation is we always we're always grateful when you join us because there's a lot that we have to talk about road safety. And while I know we pressured a lot from the enforcement side because that's yes. where you represent today, we all do have a responsibility as well as as people who mm. traverse the road as drivers, as cyclists, as people on motorcycles, even people who walk on the roads, people who get off buses. All of us have to be cognizant of each other's safety. I and pedestrian, the, uh -huh. the thing is that, sorry to cut yeah. you off, is that the vulnerable users of the road, which are the pedestrian, the cyclists, the motorists, are the most, you know, affected, yeah. right? And sometimes, again, when roads are being built, and that's why road safety, uh, road safety is mm -hmm. something that has to be a part of all infrastructure yeah. projects, yeah. road safety. How can you build a road in an area where people live and, and then you put no the, and then you there's no way for people to cross the road mm -hmm. right so you have to build roads mm -hmm. so that uh, it suits the so you have to bear in mind people yeah whenever you do any project people has to be at the forefront yeah okay. well we appreciate you coming in and talking about uh, the ongoing work as you said the road safety initiative continues, continues now with the philip Bolson highway yes. which means infrastructure development and also more education there yeah, will be well. infrastructure but the, pro the, the part that, that is it will only be for uh, traffic uh, safety from our part uh, we still have miss pamela again as yeah. the project manager for that for that project yeah and education and the health okay. so we have ministry of education that will be responsible also for ensuring that all the schools along that highway are you know pe that teachers are being trained yeah uh, you know and, and and it's part of their curriculum excellent okay right. yes. thank you so much for coming in we appreciate it thanks very much we're going to go ahead and take a break when we come back we'll be joined by representatives of the statistical institute of belize to talk about census 2020 please stay tuned